Oh no! Mom, not now. So, for dinner? No. But I, I gotta go. I gotta go. I think call. Uh. <laughs> Is this nine one one? I have an emergency. I got a. There was a crash here. There was a guy with a very amazing body. But never, never mind that. Can you send help? He's like laying, killing over dead on this. What do you guys got? Yeah, 25 year old male, BP 140 over 90, and heart rate 120. Post NBA. A GCS of 15, he's alert and oriented, his respiratory rate is 28, and his stats are 90%. Why was that guy flexing in the middle of the street? Oh. Uh. Ready? One, two, three. Whoa. Hey bud, can you tell me your name? Uh, Luke. Alright, Luke, are you having any pain right now? Yeah. Where at? I have my arm and my my chest, it hurts. Okay. I can't I can't even breathe. Are you having any shortness of breath with that then? Yes. Okay. Alright, so I'm gonna go ahead and order EKG, CBC, let's get an X-ray on his left forearm and his neck. Somebody get a fresh set of vital signs. Let's put them on a let's put them on a nasal cannula. And can somebody page RT for me. How's it going, Mr. Laney? We're the Kyle from RT, and we're here to give you your physical assessment. How you doing today? Uh, okay. All right. Everything looks in order. All right. I'm Mr. Do you mind if I go and listen to your breath sounds real quick? Uh, all right, sweet. One second. Just go ahead and take a nice deep breath for me if you can. Alright, and again. Excuse my retreat reading. Maybe you can scoot uh, lead forward for me a little bit again. Mm. Oh, perfect. It's just like that. Okay. Nice deep breath, perfect. Alright, again. Not so much pain. Let's one more time. Alright, go and lie back down here quick. Okay. Alright, so your breath sounds so pretty normal to me. So we're gonna take off this front pressure cup. So it doesn't get in the way. So now we're gonna perform chest percussions. So if you look at this. Okay. Like this side. And this side. Just a little bit of a reach around. So your percussion note feels pretty good. All right, Mr. Laney, good news. So your x-ray of your neck and your arm came back pretty good. So we're gonna go ahead and take that splint and that seat collar off you, okay? Oh, thank you. Oh. So is that on, is that oxygen helping you out at all? I don't know. Mr. Lady, so I figured out why you're having that chest pain, shortness of breath. Okay. So what it is, your chest x-ray came back and it looks like you've got a broken rib there on your left hand side. Oh, yeah. right here, okay. Yes. Do you feel it when I push on it? Does that hurt? Yeah. yeah. Okay, I can feel a little crepitus in there too. So so what we're gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna admit you and I'm gonna have orthopedics come and take a look at you and see if we can get you all fixed up here, okay? Awesome, thank you so much. What is a portal effusion? A pleural effusion is fluid accumulation inside the pleural space. This fluid separates the visceral and pleural pleura. That causes lung compression. So, let's talk about anatomic alterations. 
So the major pathologic and anatomical structural changes that happen that occur with pleural effusions are atelectasis, lung compression, and the compression of the great veins, which then causes a decrease in cardiac venous return. So, how the patient will present. So, some major vital signs that include are tachycardia, tachypnea, and hypertension. Uh, usually, some early signs and symptoms for your patient are chest pressure, pleuritic chest pain, non-productive dry cough, and dyspnea. And usually, all your patients are cyanotic. Knock, knock. Hey, Mr. Delaney. Hi. Dr. Benelli again. So it's been about a month since your surgery. How are you feeling? Yeah, I'm feeling not too good. I still am short of breath and still a little bit of uh, lightheadedness and just overall chest pain. Okay, did that just come on all of a sudden or has that been like progressively getting worse? It's progressively been getting worse. Okay. Okay, how about that rib fracture? How does that rib feel? It feels like it's healing up. Yeah. Feels good. Okay. But I'm still very short of breath and everything. Why do you think that's because? I'm not sure, but uh, we'll, we'll get to the bottom of it, okay? Okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and um, have x-ray come back in and do another chest x-ray so we can see how exactly that is healing up. And um, and I'm gonna have RT come in since you're feeling a little bit short of breath and that chest pain. I'm gonna have them assess you and, and we'll go from there, okay? Okay, thank we'll you. Let's figure it out. Thank you. So the chest assessment findings that we will find on the patient with a pleural effusion include a tracheal shift to the unaffected side, decreased tactile vocal fremitus, dull percussion notes, diminished breath sounds, displaced heart sounds, and a pleural friction rub occasionally. I'm Mr. Laney. I'm Kyle from Respiratory, and I'm here to assess you. Uh, may I check your game? Yeah. Sure. All right. All right. Put this pole socks on. So it sounds like you have some diminished breath sounds in your left side. And now I'm going to do perform some percussions. So just do this. It seems like you're satting a little bit low, and it looks like your vitals are fine. So I'm going to put you on a nasal cannula. Okay. So I'm going to put you on 2 liters nasal cannula. To diagnose pleural effusion, the main way is by using a chest x-ray or a lateral decubitus x-ray. In the x-ray, we will see blunting of costophrenic angles, a fluid level on the affected side. We'll see depressed diaphragm, a mediastinal shift, possibly to the affected side, atelectasis, and a meniscus sign. Dr. Benelli, it looks like um, Mr. Laney over here has um, uh, diminished breath sounds in his left side, and also he has a dull percussion note. Did you get the chest x-ray? I don't know, let's check. Check that out. Yeah. Wow, looks like he's got a full effusion there, huh? Right, yeah. Alright, alright, let's go let him know. Dr. Laney? Yeah, how's it going, Dr. Benelli? Well, RT and I have looked at your x-ray, and it looks like you've got a pleural effusion. Is that contagious? <laughs> no, relax, it's not contagious. Oh, okay. Do you know what a pleural effusion is? No, I don't. 
All right, so a pleural effusion is when the cavity around your lung starts filling up with fluid. That's gonna cause a little bit of compression on your lungs. And since yours is moderate, so it has about 500 to 1500 milliliters of fluid in there, you can imagine that's gonna cause a compression on your lungs. And that's what's causing your shortness of breath, most likely. Oh, All right, so okay. I wanna admit you again, unfortunately, and keep an eye on it for a little bit and see um, what our treatment options are from there, okay? I might have to do a thoracentesis, which would be, I would have to stick a needle in that sac to take the fluid out. Ow! Yeah, it's pretty painful, so I want to avoid that as best as possible, so okay. that's why I want to admit you and keep an eye on it for a little bit. Okay. And then um, another possible treatment option is what's known as a pleurodesis. So with a pleurodesis, I would put some medication into that sac um, the most common one is known as talc, and that's going to stop any more fluid from leaking into that sac. Oh, wow, okay. All right, so we're going to we're gonna admit you and keep an eye on you and go from there. Okay. Right. Thank you, Dr. Benelli. Yeah, you're welcome. Prognosis. So the prognosis of the patient varies in accordance to the underlying cause of the pleurofusion. If the pleurofusion is caused by heart failure, for example, we would give the patient Lasix to help resolve the problem. However, if the, patient, if the perfusion is caused by infection, we would give them antibiotics to reverse the infection. Okay, so there are two types of pleural effusions. You have transudates and you have exudates. For transudates, uh, it is the fluid from pulmonary capillaries that moves into the pleural space. And usually it is thin and watery and also has few blood cells and has little to no protein. And on the other hand, we have exudates. And so what exudates are is the pleural spaces are diseased. They're usually caused by inflammation, infection, or malignancy. And they also have fluid with high protein content. They have a great deal of cellular, cellular debris. And also these values classified as an exudate if the pleural fluid protein is uh, greater than 2.9 grams per deciliter. You also have your pleural fluid cholesterol, which is greater than 45 uh, mg per deciliter, and you have your pleural fluid lactate dehydrogenase, which is greater than 60% of your upper limit of serum. So the ABG results for a small pleural fusion are an acute respiratory alkalosis, but for a large pleural fusion, it's going to be an acute respiratory acidosis. And for PFT findings, they indicate that this disorder is a restrictive disorder or that they have decreased lung volumes. Yeah! Prognosis. So the. Dang it, Eric. We film in here. <laughs> Did you get that? I'm just saying it in my head. Try standing up to see if it's good. So, we good here? Yeah. Yeah, just so you don't move any farther. Knock, knock. Hey, wait, Mr. Lee. Wait, wait, get my phone so I have doses. And for the PFT findings, they result in a. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, word? Uh, result okay, of so respiratory acidosis. Alkalosis. Mess up for What is a pleural effusion? A pleural effusion is a flu fluid... <laughs>